Thank you. Um, I'm going to use this in a second. I was going to get my pose first. It's this. Right there. Huh? Hold it. Hold it. Good. Okay. I'm right, done. That's enough pose. Hold on first. Brought this rug from my home yesterday. I feel like being at home. I feel like being comfortable. I mean, I'm a little nervous, but who isn't when they speak? Okay. I wanted to start do, uh, start off, if we could, if you could indulge me, and do something a little different this morning. I think this has been great, though. I had no idea that there was going to be this much leeway into me speaking, so it's kind of helped, like, calm the nerves a little bit, and I'm like, oh, cool, everyone's having a good time. It's not so, like... What are you going to say to me? <laughs> Teach me something. Okay, so if we could all, you don't have to, I'm going to because I haven't. I'm going to put my phone on silent. I want to take, I guess I need the timer too. I wanted to start and do 30 seconds, which is kind of cool that you guys just did the 30 second thing because I, I hadn't even told anyone I wanted to do this. And I'm going to sit down. I wanted to take the first 30 seconds before we talk and just sit in silence. Part of my um, journey over the last year, last two years, I've been doing some contemplative practice and meditation, and I find when I sit and when I just observe myself, when I observe and hear the space that I'm in, I feel like it really kind of calms me. It kind of brings me back to this present moment, and I believe the present moment is something very powerful that we often overlook and We'll get into it a little bit, but it may be a little weird, it may be awkward, you can stare at me, you don't have to do anything special, but I'm just literally going to hit my timer and we're going to be silent for 30 seconds. So a big thank you again, a big round of applause to uh, Megan and the whole Creative Morning team. Uh, we've talked about this. Megan, I met Megan two years ago, I think, right as she was coming on to Creative Mornings, but right before it got started, and it's taken that long for me. This is actually my first time here, so it's kind of odd that my first time to come to a meeting would be the first time I'm speaking. Uh, but again, just a huge thank you. And uh, Justin, thank you for the, the kind words, my identical brother. Um, like he said, uh, as I've been thinking about pre preparing for uh, this morning the past two weeks, I, I'm not a public speaker. I, I'm an artist. I'm, I call myself a public artist. I, I'm not well versed in the manner of standing in front of crowds. I work by myself most of the time. So it's just kind of humbling to me when I think about this group of people, this crowd coming in wanting to hear some of the things that, that I've learned um, along the way. So here we go. This is a one of my favorite poets, a German poet, um, no longer alive, but his name is Rainer Maria Rilke, and I was going to read this portion of, of his poem, and it says, I live my life in widening circles that reach out across the world. I may not ever complete the last one, but I give myself to it. To me, that's a beautiful illustration of life, of work, of whatever we're doing. And this idea of these, if you think about circles, they're patterns, they're repeating. And if you think we start out small, we're in a family, we, we only know our family and we go to school and those circles start widening and we, we become adults and we mature and we have our jobs, all of this stuff starts to spiral outward. I love the audacity and the bravery that he writes that if he never completes the last one, he's still going to give himself to it. That to me resonates so deeply because, and as we'll talk about here in a little bit, um, being present, I just, 
what we have in front of us to do is, is so important. And um, so I want to give myself to it, just like he writes. Okay, so there, uh, okay, I was going to say as part of my non-public speaking slide that I'm going to be saying um and uh a lot. Um, so let's just get that over with. <laughs> so there are these four major moves that I've made in my life that I kind of feel have defined me, helped shape me, have um, been a real struggle for me in the past. Some of them have been often overlooked, and I feel like now I'm coming to kind of put pieces together and, and realize just how important these things, and the time I didn't understand, have really helped shape me. Uh, I was going to give a very high arc kind of overview, just kind of gloss over it, but instead I decided to pull back a little bit and we're going to focus in on just kind of one of those, those areas. And when I look back, I think about these moves as um, more like stepping stones in my life. I don't know if anyone's ever been fly fishing or if you've ever been out in a river and a stream and you feel that current kind of pushing against your feet. You can't really see where your feet are too, too often, but what I think about when you're making that next step, you're always searching for solid ground to stand on. Um, one of those things in my life that's solid ground is this identity. And I'm kind of convinced that we're all asking ourselves um, one question ever in our lives. Could be different. I could ask, we could do a questionnaire, and I might get as many different answers as there are people in this room. For me, the, the question I'm always asking is, do I fit? Um, do I belong? And I've answered that question a lot of different ways in my past, and, and sometimes acting out of fear, trying to overcompensate, trying to fit into places where I may not have tried, not really fit, or just not being myself. But one quick question, where do you think this guy fit? No, no, no one, that's me. At 16. Why did they give me a driver's license? I don't know. <laughs> but if you could please take note of the bowl cut, and I was 5'10", so yes, we are identical. <laughs> <laughs> I actually don't know your height. I'm sorry. I'm not picking on you. I love you. Okay. I just had to throw that in there. Isn't that good? I can't believe that I have that scan some. It was in my archives. Okay, enough. So, <laughs> as, with, as with anyone in this room, I'm sure I've I've had my fair share of obstacles to get over. I think um, if I were being really honest, probably myself would be the biggest obstacle. I think there's a lot of ways we can defer, and I've deferred a lot in my life to pointing the finger. What I'm learning now, boom, finger right back at me. And I think that's where the, the growth begins, and that's when we become honest. Um, experience. Experience is what I believe to be our greatest teacher. Uh, we can learn, we can have head knowledge, we can study. But when teacher, uh, when when teacher, when experience comes in, I feel like what it offers us is a gift, and that's wisdom. And once that is imparted to us, I don't think there's anything that can that can take that from us. <laughs> and I was gonna say perseverance is a mean motherfucker, but uh, it wouldn't all fit in. Like I was trying to go down, <laughs> and now I just stretched out the. Yeah. My wife told me, she's like, why? Nobody cares about the slides. I was like, I do. She's like, yeah, it's because you're an artist. <laughs> Anyways. It's a, it's a true story, though. Perseverance, learning to persevere, how to be patient, how to overcome. That is a mean. It's like staring. It's like kicking you when you're down and just telling you, come on, get up. Like, let's go. Keep doing it. And it's in my experience or my life, that's, that's kind of been, uh, I'm very thankful for that, though. I'm very thankful to by my experiences, learn to, to persevere. So right, so what is one of those major moves in my life? Um, some of you may know, a lot of you may not know, I spent four years um, active duty in the Air Force from 2003 to 2007. I resisted this part of my story for, for a long time. I never wanted to be seen as patriotic. It was really never part of my upbringing. My, my family is, doesn't really have a military heritage, but it was, a, it was just presented to me at all of what, 2021, 20, not having any direction in life, not really knowing what to do, um, living at home. My dad's like, yeah, you're not going to do that. So you go get a real job or you can go talk to a recruiter. So this ended up being part of, part of my story now. I'm interested to know if anyone knows what this means, the dots in the center, not the photo. 
So I spent six months after basic training in Arizona learning Morse code. The most antiquated language on the planet, and they still teach it to this day. And it is a bitch. I never thought, um, I never thought I'd get through it. Six months in the desert. It was one of the hardest, challenging, um, often seemed unsurmountable obstacle at that point in my life. And there's just days of being frustrated and questioning myself, my existence, why am I here, what am I doing, this is not helping anything. And to come six months later and to, to have achieved the level where I could graduate and move on from this class and knowing Morse code, it's like, who freaking learns Morse code? But uh, it felt so good. This is like one of those experiences I'm talking about. It, it indwelled in me this confidence um, of overcoming things. And I think I've taken some of that now, and it gives me, it gives me a, a, a thirst for taking risks, for choosing obstacles that seem bigger than myself. Oh, wait, I'm going backwards. Here we go. Can I get to tell us what it means? SOS. Oh, SOS. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Yes. <laughs> help. This is my cry for help right here. I am asking for help. <laughs> right now. <laughs> Thank you. So let's fast forward. That was 07. It's 17. So, yeah, 10 years now. It's been a decade. Um, and again, like I kind of started off this this contemplative practice um, that I've been going through the, the past year or so, it's really helped me to kind of slow down. And I'm such a point A to B guy, when I go on a road trip, I hate stopping. I just like, go there. How do we get there fastest? But with having two children now, that obviously can't happen. So I have to learn to let a lot of that go. And the journey is the destination. That's such a beautiful thing for me to when I'm working, when I'm at home with my girls, when I'm cooking, when I'm changing a diaper, whatever I'm doing, if I can focus and stay here, I'm standing right here, I'm a little nervous, but this is awesome, this energy is really good. And, I mean, these are pictures of my work and, and what I've done, but in those moments, I felt like I can remember, I can go back to each of those and, and remember the fun that I was having. Um, and not trying to get to the end of something, but just enjoying it in, the, in that moment. Okay, so I was going to take you through um, three quick, how are we doing on time? We're good? Okay, good. Uh, three quick um, examples of work that I've done this year and kind of try to give you a, a brief look at some of the obstacles that I had to, to overcome. This is a project downtown Dallas at Paws of the Americas. It was up on the roof. And little did I know, this is so cool, this is great. I went in, I pitched them, I was like, hey, I want to do this on the roof. And they're like, yeah, that sounds great, let's do it. And I was like, wow, that was really easy. <laughs> <laughs> little did I know, their parking garage had zero access to the roof. And renting this um, tons of just bulky metal scaffolding, I had to figure out, I had to go in, barely made it in the parking, go in the building, go up these glass elevators. So I'm lugging all of this just like heavy scaffolding equipment with me. And then I get to the roof and there's these 30 foot retaining walls and my scaffolding only goes to 18 feet. So all these things are like facing me. I'm just like looking obstacle after obstacle, but I had a blast. It was super fun to, the first time I climbed on the very top and I hope there's nobody from Home Depot or the safety department because I totally <laughs> didn't follow those rules. Uh, to stand on the very top and you're kind of like shaking and it's 18 feet to the ground. That was a little scary, but I did it once, and I was like, oh, this is actually really fun. <laughs> and so then I would just, it was just really cool. But that was, um, that was the, the biggest obstacle in that project. This is, um, what you're seeing is the finished product over here at the Alexan, just north of Victory Park, a new apartment, one of the new, many great high-rise apartments going up. They had the great fortune of deciding to build an apartment directly behind the famous beer waterfall billboard. So they had this nasty metal, like unfinished, just rusted out structure that their new tenants were going to soon just look at. Um, so they called me, we spent the better over a year working on this. But it was kind of daunting thinking, oh my God, I have to create a singular piece that people are actually gonna live with. Um, I mean, it's not something people choose like that painting 
they're not just going to go out and buy that and hang it on their wall. No, they're going to open their windows. They're going to have morning coffee. They're going to go to bed at night. And I don't know what they think about this. I've only gotten one direct message from Instagram from somebody saying, hey, I saw, I can see your piece of art. And he's like way up, like looking down on it. It's like, that's cool. It's just, to me, I never would have thought about that. And, um, but I'm happy with it. It's, it's bold. It's bright. I mean, we just went back and forth. There's a lot more I could go into that. If you're interested, we can talk more about that later. Third obstacle. Um, well, not third. This is another project I worked on this year. And there's some of the girls here from, from this. This is a uh, property in Fort Worth called West Bend. They commissioned me this summer. I worked, I don't know, June, July, August-ish on this. So the hottest part of the year here. And... The thing that was challenging about this example, this is no longer there. It's, I said, inspire people, but don't offend anyone. <laughs> That's a little tongue in cheek. <laughs> this was actually an approved concept I sent to the management company who commissioned me, and they all loved it. They thought it was great. And I guess if I'm being honest, I kind of knew I'm, when I'm drawing this on the wall. This is very, I mean, this is just a park, this is in a parking garage. And you have, this is a retail restaurant space. I mean, you have everyone from, elderly couples, families with kids, anybody, creative, non-creatives coming. And I went out of town, I, I did this, I took these photos and I left. And while I'm gone, I get a voicemail saying, yeah, so there's been like a problem, we need to talk when we get back. And so I just knew, I was like, I know what they're talking about. And it's not like I set out to challenge anybody's notions of what it means to be human or, or race or anything like that. I just these images and these words were just kind of in me, and I brought them out, and I just was wanting to share something. And so I just think, honestly, some people, they have a hard time facing things in themselves, and they don't, therefore don't like to be challenged, maybe. So then we recreated this. Um, I don't have pictures of it, but if you went to Fort Worth, you could see it. Okay. So... I think this kind of just alludes, it's kind of going, continuing on. Um, and I, I know I just touched on one brief moment in time in my history from, from Morse code and, and Air Force, but all the other moves, everything then, what I can see now is preparing me for, for where I am today. So like those obstacles and overcoming has totally prepared me now for, for overcoming obstacles in my work, for taking risk and, and taking on new challenges. Uh, and this to further drive it home, the present is the only moment where we find ourselves and easily lose ourselves at the same time. And I notice this so much. I mean, look, hold on. A what? Sorry. That's like the most common, this, this head motion right here. And I think scientists, or not scientists, doctors are finding now in younger kids, they're actually forming neck problems because this has become such a popular uh, movement, not a movement, just a position. Um, and not that that's the only distraction, right? I mean, that's an easy one to point the finger at, but we have to ask ourselves, why do I choose to go there? Why is that my distraction? Why am I not just sitting here? Uh, and I ask myself that a lot, too. I'm not judging, I'm just saying this is what I'm dealing with, too. Little side note, I love this quote from Picasso, it takes a long time to become young. I think that's beautiful. I think in a lot of my work, I'm trying to get back to that being a kid again, being excited, drawing faces on ketchup bottles and whatever, like that stuff. I mean, that's just, just fun. Like if we're not having fun, if we're not getting back to that point, like why, why be so serious in our work? And so now, now I feel I may not know and understand everything that I'm being taught, but everything now I, I, I hope, right? That's the hope. And 10 years from now, maybe I'm standing in this room, maybe I'm standing in another room, maybe I'm standing in my living room. Uh, it's preparing me for where I'm going to be. Oh, and then let's watch this. This is kind of an awful segue, but I didn't really know where else to place it, and I wanted to show this rocket exploding. <laughs> so this is, this is part of the SpaceX program. If you're familiar with Elon Musk, Tesla at all, yes, no, maybe? Yes. Okay. Well, um, and we can just go over and over, but here, I'll switch this. We, we were listening to a podcast last week on our way home from Nashville, and they were interviewing Mr. Neil deGrasse Tyson, 
Degrasse? Degrassi? I think it's Degrasse. 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 Yeah. Okay. Good. And he was talking about this, and they were talking about these explosions, and you know, you could look at that and think, oh man, like he's totally failing. Like he's building, wasting all this money, spending all this money, launching these rockets, and they're just freaking blowing up. And I, I think the, the opposite is true. That That is a sign of progress. It may explode, sure, but now you're going to know what to do next time, and you're just going to keep going and keep trying. And so he, and he had this quote on this podcast, and my wife's like nudging me. She's like, you should write that down. Uh, you're only on the frontier when you're making mistakes. And to me, that's, that's like right on the nose. Everything, I'm, I've made a lot of mistakes. And how I've learned to internalize that and how I'm, I'm trying to help that kind of come out of me is, is really gravitating towards the imperfections in my work and not trying to cover those up, not trying to be ashamed and say like, oh yeah, that's just not good enough. But like, that's what it is. And so yeah, I think if we're not making mistakes, we're not really, uh, we're not really growing. And this too is true. Who, I don't know, I don't know it all. Do you guys know it all? If somebody knows it all, I'd please, I'd love to talk to you. <laughs> but, <laughs> but I feel like that in my business, and my work, and standing up here just blabbering on and on, I feel like we're all just making it up as we go along. And that's kind of cool because then we all get to share that uh, maybe you work on a team somewhere and you are trying things out and you get to share that with your team or whether it's collectively, it's humanity. Like we get to share that with, um, with each other's, with each other's, with each other. <laughs> <laughs> so this is, next to last slide, uh, one of my favorite artists of the year, Mr. Kendrick Lamar, great poet. He said, careers take off, we just gotta be patient. If you haven't listened to his new album, Highly recommended. <laughs> okay. Thank you.